Hello again. We had stopped where I was, said I was going to cover the, the seven heads and the seven mountains, but I have to go back to set it up still. The period highlighted in black is 535 AD to 556 AD. And it's a black period, all right. This is the worst. Everything started to go wrong, really, but he didn't think so. They didn't see how bad it was. Everything started to go wrong when he sent Belisarius to Italy. Okay, and he did that because he was so he was so proud of himself. You know, that's for Belisarius Para, the guy alongside you. Um, and then he sends him to the Vandals in northern Africa. And he had done that, and he had success there. So now he's all big-headed. And so he immediately sends, in 535 and 536, he immediately sends Belisarius to Rome to conquer it back for the Roman Empire because he's trying to recreate the old Roman Empire under Constantine. And as I had said before, this is when everything starts to go wrong, but he doesn't know it yet. He's still in his success phase. He's still doing his little big, big, big headed thing. Okay? So he's building the, the Hagia Sophia at this point. He had started building it here. That's two years while our boy Belisarius is in Africa. And these are the next two years while he's in Rome, conquering Rome, which is Western Italy. That, that's only Western. Okay, there was more to do. And then he completes Hagia Sophia here. Now, it's real important, if you're going to understand the Bible's satire, wit, the meaning of Antichrist and all that, that we go through these little things. Because they're not little. Okay, they're really not. There's so much information here. Every single syllable is a, a huge satire. And I keep missing things after I've finished. So we have to go back again before I can come here to 545. And this is the whole world going to hell in a handbasket at this point. Okay. Everything almost dies during this time. So what you need to understand is that God, you know, since this is our first poster boy Antichrist, and this is a real historical person, this stuff really happened. He should have known because Greek was native to the you know, Constantinople, Eastern Roman Empire. And there were a whole bunch of people who were possessed of the Bible texts. Okay, Revelation was very not popular in Eastern Rome. But a lot of people possessed it just the same. And so this would have been a warning to those people. Hi, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen now, and it ain't going to be nice. All right, so when it says here, and then you insert the word is in English, here a mind which has wisdom okay anybody looking at that would have been alerted if they knew the meter oh I better look and see what's gonna happen now and whatever's gonna happen now this is giving me the heads up be careful okay but they didn't or maybe somebody did you know because we're still here or somebody super matured because this is all about super maturation all right, somebody's doing something. But it was available. That's the thing I want you to understand. It was available. God made the information available at this point 456 years in advance. Okay, or you could say 447 years in advance if you start at this part of the clause. You get that? It's real important because now we're going to go through, because in order to set this up to see why this was so destructive a period, I have to go back and cover some things I didn't cover. So our boy is all full of himself while Belisarius is conquering Africa, sends him immediately to conquer Rome, and that highlighted in black, and black is real important to what I'm going to say next, is 535 and 536. While our boy Justinian himself is busy building a temple, a church to God, instead of learning the word, and spending all this money poorly, okay, 
it's really stupid to spend a lot of money bringing in ton, a ton of, literally, a ton of silver that you're going to make a throne out of. And then you gild it? The, I, which is worse? Gilding silver? Hello? Okay, the guy's an idiot. Total idiot. Now, how's God going to make that clear since he's obviously not reading scripture? During this period, very period, while Belisarius is in Italy now, and he's just finished conquering Rome by 536, he will end up conquering all the way over to the Goths by 540, which is right here, and I'll get to that because that's real pregnant too. God, foreknowing all this, Basically, I mean, it, you know, scientists would call it a, you know, disaster. But obviously, if you look at Leviticus 28, I mean Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, you know that God orders these things. There was a disaster that occurred over a large swath of the world. And today, even today, scientists aren't sure what caused it. But it's just like it's depicted in other chapters of Revelation. The sun doesn't give off a third of its light. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. This guy's the poster boy Antichrist. So his term of office is what you can expect the tribulation to be like. Okay? It's a heads-up dress rehearsal. Okay? Because Satan must have thought that he had a really good chance of bringing about the downfall of church due to this guy. So the sort of things that are depicted in Revelation is, is happening, like things going wrong with the sun, the moon, and the stars. And that was already in Matthew 24, 25, which Revelation 17 is updating. Well, they start happening during his time. The sun doesn't give off its light. That means there's poor crops. It means it's a lot colder. And it's because it got colder. Climate change is a hoax, honey. It's because it got colder that all the little bugs and germs and everybody that, that can can move now because it's cooler due, due to the, you know, make a plague occur, which happens right here, remember, in Constantinople, but it actually started here. Uh, no, let's see. Yeah, here. That's how the plague can start. If the, if the earth cools too much, and too much is one degree, the Paris Accord calls for cooling the earth by 2.5 degrees centigrade. That's, that's life-threatening. That's how, that's how non-effective, how vile, how wrong climate change is. They have no idea. I mean, these are historical facts, okay? You can look this up. 535 to 539 is when this, this problem with the sun started. 535, 536, 537, that's the completion of Hagia Sophia now. 538, news, your mind should have been alerted by now, because now you got, you've got, you know, 535 to 538, you got bad crops. No sun. 539. And it's during this time that, that, that everybody gets restive. Well, do you see why? You haven't had food for three years. You got somebody taking over you and taxing you, and you don't have the money because you barely have the food. You're going to be restive. So all the gains that Belisarius had right here with Rome, he starts to lose because the people that he conquered they get restive, and on top of that, Justinian's getting restive. Yeah, because everybody's getting restive because the sun is darker. Okay, now they talk about that. In here, and I haven't reviewed it in Bury, but I'm just going here for now because I haven't finished Bury. All right, extreme weather events of 535, 536, and it depends on who you talk to at 535, 536, 537, 538. Okay. But you can just click on Extreme Weather Events of 535, 536, and you can read it yourself. And they're talking about they measured the trees and ice cores, and they don't know what caused it. They think some kind of ashes or dust was thrown into the air, and it just stayed up after a volcano. See, a volcano can do more damage 
than all of human intervention. This is another reason why climate change is foolish. That's all you need. It's all we got a one degree change in climate, which, by the way, is as much as it ever changes. 2.5 degrees centigrade is life threatening. Okay, you don't want more than one degree change, and you can't cause a degree change by what you do with your car. Is pollution a problem? Yes. But climate change is not related to it. Okay? But, oh, hello, ashes or dust from a volcano might be temporarily. Yeah, and that's what they think happened. A comet or a meteorite or something really big hitting the earth or exploding just above the earth. And it made the, the sky darker, okay, for 536. Well, that's what Revelation is talking about, honey. That's what, you know, I mean, you don't need me to tell you about Revelation 6 and 7 and 8, where they're talking about all those things, and that's like the plagues in Egypt. You know, not exactly the same, but evocative, okay? That's what's happening during this dark period. So notice the tie together. He goes to Rome, pillar of apostasy. He's building a church instead of helping his people, pillar of apostasy. He's not learning Bible doctrine. He's spending other people's money. He's trying to revive the Rome that was, and the Rome that was was a bad Rome that persecuted Christians, which he already started doing. And so the heavens and the earth are going to reflect that. Now, the thing that's so remarkable to me about this is that that is like... When you look at Greek drama, which is, oh, I hate Greek drama, okay? But when you look at it, it's always saying that everything you do on earth is a reflection or tied to something going on in the heavens. And therefore, when bad stuff happens in the heavens, it's supposed to alert you to bad stuff you might be doing on earth. So when the earth darkens, Right here, when he's doing what he's doing and Belisarius is doing what they're doing, nobody woke up and smelled the coffee? Procopius wrote about this. Okay? And they examined it with tree rings for those dates. So we know it happened. So what? what all the brains turned off in the Roman Empire? Okay? This should have been one great big alert. Stop what you're doing. God doesn't like it. That's part of Greek culture even before it Christianized. That was part of Oriental culture even before it Christianized. That was part of pagan culture in the West even before it Christianized. Because we can't control the sky. And we think somebody else must have made that sky. And maybe that somebody else is mad at us if the sky ain't working. That's a common thought pattern in humankind. Going all the way back to the beginning. And of course it, it's true. You know? Just because we know how the lights are in the sky now. And that how their orbits work and all that doesn't make it any less divine. Okay, so what happened to his brain here? Okay? And what that ends up meaning is that all of the realm that he just finished conquering, Africa and Italy, are the, the, the profit from them goes way down. And people are starting to get sick because it's colder. And the crops, when it gets colder, what happens is the crops don't grow as well and that means there's more rain, so it's also more soggy, so there's more mold, so there are more insects. That's how come you get the plague. And so the crop yields are lower, and they're not as nutritious, and therefore people are hurting all over this area. Okay, whether it was ruled by him or not because there are effects of it that are measured as far away as Indonesia and as far north as the North Pole. Okay, so it was like, like semi-global. Okay, but if you have the word of God, you don't, you don't realize this? Hello? He didn't. So his noose was empty. All right? 
On top of that, and this is what I didn't cover because I was going to reserve it till later, but I can't wait any longer, is that starting in 529, this 527, 28, that takes you to 29. Starting officially in 529, you have another thing that historians overpraise him on besides that stupid Hagia Sophia. They praise him on this, the Justinian Code of Laws. The very first time, it really wasn't, the very first time we had a whole a organized codex of a rule of law. If you go to read those rules, you want to throw up. You know what there are? The rules about how to confiscate your property. There are rules saying that, hi, if you don't believe in our Council of Chalcedon version of Christianity, we're going to confiscate your property. They were, it was anti-Semitic. It was, it was like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. it it's the worst most vile, disgusting institutionalization of discriminatory law against freedom, against belief, that can be invented. Now, if you were part of the group who was Chalcedonian, well, then, yeah, then you got all these things, like if you're female and your husband is nasty to you, you can get redress of grievances. And, and so today's liberals, or maybe not liberals, who look at the Justinian Code say, well, see, they had all these nice laws, you know, pro-women, and all these nice laws about protecting your property. Yeah, but it was only true if you were a member of the chosen faith. Otherwise, honey, you weren't even an animal. So tell me that that was true law. That's not what law is supposed to do. The whole purpose of law is to provide freedom. It has no other value. You need a certain amount of law because you got to have your freedom and I got to have my freedom. And what if you're an atheist? Then what if I'm a rabid Christian? Well, shouldn't you be protected from me and me from you? So we need a law between us to sort of mediate that. There's a certain things that I can do as a Christian because I'm supposed to be free. Certain things you can do as an atheist because you're supposed to be free. But if you be punch me in the nose because I'm a Christian or I punch you in the nose because you're an atheist, shouldn't there be a law to arbitrate that? Yeah, well, not here. Jews were treated like untermenschen. He was violently anti-Semitic, and of course that was true ever since 451 when the Council of Chalcedon was promulgated. So this whole Justinian code is really, well, if you're on the inside of Christianity the way we define it, well, then you get certain rights. Otherwise, honey, you're just, you're not even cattle. And he started promulgating that right here. I am so disgusted with people who think the Justinian Code was good. It was only good for the in crowd. Otherwise, it was no good. We should be despising it. But we don't. Okay, so now, look. This is when the Justinian Code takes effect in 529 AD. And so that's why from 530 AD all the way through until he's dead, Bastard. He uses the Justinian cult to take your money, to accuse you, to confer favor or take away favor from people that he liked or didn't like, and his wife did the same thing, and of course, you know, so do all the magistrates everywhere in the empire, because if the emperor does it, it must be okay. So why wouldn't God suddenly darken the sky? Because this guy is darkening the lamp of the word. Okay? So that's why we have this, oh, okay, 535, 536, 537, 538, 539, well, your crops ain't growing as well, honey, and it's cooler, so now you're going to have a lot more insects, and now, and this is what I wanted to get to, Pestilence. Echo. 
Greek verb echo. Echon. This is the present participle of it with the what it's an O that uh, Omega looks like a W in English. Echon. It's translated having, but you have to understand the etymology of the word. Echo means to grab something and hold it. It's not just having. It's the act of grabbing and holding. All right, so now this is 535, 536, 537, 538, 539. And now the, the air starts to be a little bit better, not much. And the sun starts to shine a little brighter, not much. And it's still cold enough. Okay, 536, 7, 8, 535, 6, 7, 8, 9, 540, honey, 541, 540, what happens? Well, everybody decides they want to have, they want to grasp, they want to grab, Greek verb echo, each other again, and that's when the wars with Persia start up again. That's when the the wars, um, well, the, there's a sort of hiatus in Italy, but that's when they start thinking about it and planning for the next raid, and and also in the Balkans, and also in Africa, okay, and also in the South because after all, he's using the Justinian law to persecute the Monophysites and take away their property. And you know what? After so much of that, they don't like that. And the Persians start up, therefore, and they start having some allies in the south part of the Eastern Empire that Justinian controls. Because you know what? I'd rather be under the Persians than be under a guy who's going to take away my property because I don't belong to the Council of Chalcedon. And he's using a law he promulgated that is the Justinian Code in order to take away my, my stuff. So the Persians are starting to have a real good time of getting allies here in 540. And the same thing is starting to happen up in the Balkans. And the same thing is starting to happen no sooner than our boy Belisarius, in that point highlighted in black, has just grasped, echo means to grasp and hold, has just grasped but think he's holding and is not, Ravenna. Ravenna is on the east coast. Sort of like if you think you have to think about where Constantinople is, put Constantinople in the center, and then sort of draw a, 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 what looks like a spread hand, okay, going to the left and sort of down. That's Greece, all right, but it kind of comes up again. And on that coast, inside, just before you're gonna, you know, you have that little sea there between Greece and Italy, that coast that's going up on the Sea of Greece, on the left hand side of Greece the west of it that's where Ravenna was and that was the seat of the Gothic Empire which at that black spot our boy Belisarius had finally conquered thinking oh I beat the Goths now and he's on his way home he no sooner leaves than they start fighting again and this is 541 when the plague starts in Africa to grasp everybody and kill them Meanwhile, Belisarius is, is going back to, to, to Constantinople, and Constantinople at this point is also starting to be besieged in some of its eastern reaches by the Persians, who, after all, are getting allies who, because of the grasping and holding of Justinian, because they were Monophysites, they decide they're going to let the, the Persians grasp and hold them. It's at least a little bit less trouble. It's cheaper. If you're going to be de defeated and dominated by somebody, at least to have it be less. Because the Persians didn't really care what religion you were so long as you paid your tribute. Oh, good. Well, let's go to the Persians instead. And in particular, the Jews were feeling that way. The Jews and the Monophysite Christians, okay, who had a lot in common with the Jews. Because that was Palestine. That was, you know, but at the same, at the same time, the plague is coming up through Africa and hitting them. So that kind of keeps the Persians at bay a little bit too. All right.
542 it's coming farther north and you know when you got pestilence like that on the heels of bad crops even if the sun is coming back there's nobody to till the soil because they're all dying all right so here it is 542 and your empire is really just falling down the tubes baby and finally it hits you Justinian right there at 543 you see it's really dark time really dark time all right so the point is that if you don't understand that God is judging you through all of this okay remember it's a revelation Okay, we're talking about plagues, we're talking about pestilence, we're talking about bad weather, we're talking about bad law, bad rulership, evil, and that's why you get the bad weather. God is warning you, hi, you're going in the wrong direction. You won't look at it through my word and learn it the easy way? How about learning it the hard way? And so when it says Sophia here, you see how wry and kind of poignant and satirical that is especially since he built a church with the same name just a few years prior and is exulting over it as if that made him holy okay so how could he not know by the end of this by 544 how could he not know God is not on your side okay how could he not know well but he doesn't so, golly, during these years also, the people who were recovering from the plague that, that it hit here, well, really here, they only lasted like six, nine months in each place. So then they recover and there's fewer workers, so there's more money to be made and, and wages go up and there's a certain kind of prosperity that comes because of the adversity. And then they all get big headed too. And they start fighting to take back Rome. Rome is being lost, that it was gained here. It's being lost by about here. And Africa is not too, doing too well. And of course, you know, after the initial breaks of the plague going on here, once it's hitting Constantinople and going north a little bit, just a little bit, then the Persians are recovering, and the people are recovering, and now they want they 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 want they they want to take their land back. They don't want Justinian ruling over them. Okay, so now is it so much of a surprise to see, in the seven heads, seven mountains, are. I can't get that to work. My mouth went funky. And the seven heads, seven mountains are. And that's what we'll pick up at the next increment.